Joining me this week are Nish Kumar, Zoe Lyons and Ed Gamble, Rhys James, Hugh Dennis and James Acaster. <laughs> we start with a round call if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Rhys, which category would you like? I will have politics, please. Politics? <laughs> Very hot right now, mm -hmm. politics. <laughs> the answer <laughs> is eight. What is the question? Is it, how many people does Diane Abbott think are in S Club 7? <laughs> <laughs> is it, how many bottles of champagne did Theresa May pour down the sink on Thursday? <laughs> <laughs> is it, how many days will Richard Hammond now have to spend renewing his car insurance? Is it, how old was I when my parents forgot to take me on holiday and I had to defend the house against some burglars? <laughs> Really? How many burglars? And two of them. I had to booby trap the whole place. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not proud of this. I damn near killed them. <laughs> Is it uh, what would the voting age have to be for Corbyn to have won the election? <laughs> <laughs> Is it how many people still think this whole Brexit thing was a good idea? <laughs> Is it the number of times Jeremy Corbyn has shouted, now this is strong and stable for you, whilst grabbing his cock and balls? <laughs> Feels that the sentiment is accurate, but yet somehow I still <laughs> don't see him doing it. That's a very risque joke coming from me tonight, given that I've come dressed as a brown reverend. <laughs> <laughs> you are. <laughs> Brevrend is your look. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the supermodel got fired because she what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it how what, many... Are, are you booing him or...? <laughs> Society. <laughs> is it an all-supermodel audience? Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> what, you don't boo that, it's just called you all fat. <laughs> he literally called you ugly. This... <laughs> And he's not, he's not a reverend, he can't do that's not God talking right there, right? Beware the wrath of the chocolate vicar of Dibley. <laughs> I thought it was only my family that said that. <laughs> uh, is it, how many times an hour do I watch that gif of Jeremy Corbyn high-fiving a boob? <laughs> Just right oh, I love it. Right right the knocker, imagine right imagine the knocker. what he would have done if he'd won. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, when I took my driving test, how many minors did I hit? Is that even the actual correct answer? Is yes. yes. How many days till the next election? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. More correctly, how many seats is Theresa May short of an overall majority. Absolutely right. Thank you very much. Yay. <laughs> yes, the question I was looking for was by how many seats did the Conservative Party fall short of an overall majority at this year's general election? Did you watch it? Did you sit back? I loved it. It's, it's great, isn't it? It's the most British election I ever thought I would see because no one wanted it to happen, nothing has really changed, and the only people happy are the losers. <laughs> <laughs> Right, isn't it? Perfect. It's the most victorious loss I've seen since the Jamaican bobsleigh team in Cool Running. Corbin kissing his lucky egg? Yeah. <laughs> Don't you call Diane Abbott an egg? <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> so it sort of felt like they campaigned on quite diffuse things, like Labour were talking about, you know, schools and hospitals, and Theresa May kept talking about British values. And the problem is British values mean different things to different people. Like, to some people, it means sort of openness, tolerance, and a sense that you should be able to achieve whatever you want, regardless of where you're born. And to other people, it means white people. Um... <laughs> yeah! yeah. Father, <laughs> 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 thanks, Reese, for coming in for balancing off the panel because uh, yeah. we haven't had any just openly racist people. <laughs> <Yeah. on. laughs> 
and we do get a lot of criticism for being a bit lefty, you know, liberal and all that. So it's been useful to have you in. Uh, it's a pleasure to represent my people. <laughs> The, uh, yeah, but it was ex exciting as it unfolded as well. The, yeah. uh, it was it was pretty sweet because she called the election because she was just showing off about in trying to get the landslide, trying to show how strong she was. It's like watching someone flex their muscles and then straining too hard and immediately shitting themselves. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference between a podium and a plinth? Well, that is... Well, <laughs> that's a lectern. <laughs> Yeah, the podium idiot. is the thing that you kind of... That, that stands on, isn't it? Well, well a, plinth, a plinth is the thing a statue is on. You can place yeah. a podium on a plinth, but you can't place a plinth on a podium. <laughs> that sounds like a tongue twister. <laughs> this is the kind of the Irish wisdom we can all look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> Which neatly brings us to the Democratic Unionist mm. Party, uh, <laughs> who are the new power brokers. Let me just reassure yeah. you that you may be enjoying my work, or Graham Norton's work, or Terry Wogan's work. The DUP are not in the whimsical end of Ireland. <laughs> 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 They're not in the gentle comedy of the, uh, slightly wry look at life. They're in the chaining up swings on a Sunday so children can play <laughs> school of Irish politics. Why didn't you never tell us about them? But because you, you, you never, you never, you never, this been 12 years or whatever this show's been going for, and you're just going, ah, you know, all the stuff you normally say, that they won't let me fight the robots of the robot wars or whatever. <laughs> 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 I can, give, give me one round. One round where you I know. can fight the robots with a weapon of my choice. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll, we'll see who's the winner there. Who's, see who's, a, who's a lord now, Mr. Killalot? <laughs> Why have I not told you with the pleasure of the DUP? Because <laughs> you ain't ready for the DUP. <laughs> Wait till you meet the people who don't believe in dinosaurs. <laughs> that is... They are so homophobic, it's amazing. One of their councillors blamed us gays uh, for natural disasters. And do you know what? I quite like those mad bastards for that sort of thing, because huh? there are days when I feel I haven't achieved enough in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel they protest too much because they love a parade, and we love a parade. <laughs> <laughs> One of them was on the council, and uh, they, somebody applied to put an Oktoberfest, to hold an Oktoberfest, uh, and he said, that's fine, but then tried to ban beer. <laughs> <laughs> They're not the party party. Uh, no, Oktoberfest well, without beer is just sausage and lederhosen, and no it one is, wants yeah, that. <laughs> there's sort of constantly been an obsession with sort of what Labour might do, and even after the election, there's been an obsession with Labour ministers having to U-turn because they supported Jeremy Corbyn. But surely the you know DUP thing is the biggest U-turn of all to go with the other U-turns on social care and the fact that Theresa May campaigned for Remain and is now pushing for a Brexit so aggressive, Pret a Manger is going to have to change its name to Lunch in it. <laughs> Do you, remember, do you remember seven years ago when our biggest problem was Vuvuzelas? <laughs> <laughs> we were like, oh, that's a bit annoying, that noise. Now we're like, turn it up, I can't listen to the news for one more second. <laughs> it was an incredible election night, but what's going on here? It's a bloke helping Elmo to do up his fly. <laughs> oh, my God, Elmo's turned Nazi. Elmo? <laughs> It's just a perfectly normal example of a fully grown man dressed as Elmo stood near a child's playground. It's perfectly fine. <laughs> perfectly innocent. Nothing's going on. It's just, it's just a classic fancy dress election. You've got Elmo, a bouncer, Phil Mitchell, Corella Deville and Woody Allen. <laughs> <laughs> Who else stood against his main maidenhead? Uh, Lord, Lord Buckethead. Oh, well, why, Lord why Buckethead. Because he? presumably he's got oh, a seat in the yes. House of Lords. Why is he, <laughs> what's he doing there? It looks in that picture like they've hired someone to make Theresa May look more human. <laughs> <laughs> um, petty gripe, but his head is not a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> so it is yet another lie from a politician. <laughs> 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 Also, yeah. if his eyes are where the slit is in that helmet, he's got a fucking weird head. <laughs> <laughs> it, 
Yeah. It is, it is, yeah. yeah. Give that it's probably why he wears the bucket. Yeah. <laughs> if, if he did it, I'd be very self-conscious yeah. about that. He's got this he's huge, not... weird, pencil-shaped head. <laughs> you know, it's just, like, at the top, like a couple of antennas. If he did it, he'd have to put a bucket over this, otherwise people won't take me seriously. I reckon he's got a lot of letters in his head. That's all I know. Yeah. Some people have posted stuff in there over the years. <laughs> That's how he gets other people's votes. He just sits there in the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> did, I just, did that one just talk to me? <laughs> <laughs> just shook its head, I swear to God. What was one of the main reasons for Labour's success in the election? Um, they got more votes than everyone was expecting. The, OK. <laughs> that... We all voted, me and all the rest of the scouts. We yeah. got down there and we voted. We and did, didn't we? We kids did it. And the we grind stars. young people, we, me and <laughs> Stormzy. <laughs> 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 I'm waiting for somebody to go, it storms the oh, yes. uh, Before now, Dara thought a grime star was uh, Barry Scott from Sillip Bang. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, he realised Corbyn is more hip than you. I was like, uh, when I heard that JME was supporting him, I was like, I've never heard of this union. Who are they? <laughs> That was the other problem for, for the Tories, wasn't it? Because they couldn't get the elderly to vote, because the elderly who normally go to the police station were worried that while they were out, the Tories would sell their house and send them to... <laughs> It was sort of a signal of the death of traditional media for young people anyway. They, I mean, this, this is, this dead, dead people. <laughs> this thing, this... What? I just got on this bloody show! Yeah, man. I, I don't even do this. I just do this to get on gifts. <laughs> See, I wonder if you're going to do this. Do one now. No, I'll, I'll do one now. Yeah. Surprise? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Maybe that'll be all over the internet in a week. Like, you know, it's grand. I, that's where I make all my money is on gifts these days. It really is like... Yeah. <laughs> You, you package up into tiny five-second bits of... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so George Osborne was on ITV, wasn't he, laughing like a lunatic during mm. the election coverage? Where was David Cameron? I assume well, he, he was on the phone to the Guinness Book of Records, getting them to change their category for biggest fuck-up by a Conservative. <laughs> 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 OK, at the end of that round... <laughs> We play a round called Should I May or Should I Go? <laughs> this game oh, <laughs> involves Reese and Nish. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. Mm -hmm. I launched a wheel of news, and whoever chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. Okay, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. And the first subject is courage. Reese. I'm a, I'm a very courageous person. Uh, like the other day, I was walking home from a night out and I got myself a kebab, even though I knew full well that back home I had run out of Gaviscon. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we got a badass in the room at last. <laughs> Tell you what, though, I am not courageous enough to be honest to a taxi driver. Rule one of being a comedian, do not tell a taxi driver you are a comedian. They expect too much from the relationship, right? Like, either they want you to tell them a joke for free or... <laughs> They want to tell you a joke, which is often morally all over the place. Right? <laughs> so you have to lie to them, right? But that's nerve-wracking. I was in a taxi the other day, and I freaked out. Right? My mind just went blank when I got in the taxi. I was there, I was nervous, like my palms were sweating, my knees were weak, my arms were heavy. It was very familiar. And <laughs> I was just... I was freaking out, honestly, because I knew he was going to ask that question. I knew he was going to say, what do you do for a living? I'm in the back of the taxi thinking, Reese, don't panic. Just say the first thing that comes to your head. He turned around and goes, what do you do for a living, mate? And I went, taxi driver. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, say what you see, but he didn't speak to me for the rest of the journey, so I now do it every time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> OK, so that leaves Nish. Let's see what your topic is. Let's spin the wheel. The topic is race. I'll take this one, Reese. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Difficult and interesting time to be a non-white person living in Britain right now, but I think things are improving, especially to be a non-white comedian. Because ten years ago, I got some advice from a former agent. She said, Nish, you should stop mentioning on stage that you're not white. <laughs> and I was like, people are gonna know. <laughs> I'm not exactly flying under the radar race-wise here. <laughs> So, a couple of weeks later, I got uh, offered an audition in a sitcom. Now, that part required me to do what was 
cheerfully referred to in the script as the accent, right? <laughs> <laughs> Weren't talking about French, were they? <laughs> When that came in, I said, there's absolutely no way that I'm going to do that. It's cheap. It's Uncle Tom. It's selling out my entire cultural heritage. And she said, this is the problem with you, Nish. You take too high-minded approach. You'll never be successful in comedy because you will never do comedy that relates to the man in the factory. And when she said that, I said... I don't really relate to your paradigm of the man in the factory. I think what you're trying to say is that I should appeal to as high a percentage of the British population as possible. But in the 80s, we shifted from a manufacturing to a service-based economy. <laughs> so, actually, if you wanted to talk about most of the British public, what you should have said is the man who works in the shop or the man who works in a hotel. And she said, I mean, this is exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chris. Point of the line goes to Rhys Come back. Our next round is called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what's happening. So what's going on here? She's just moved into the White House, hasn't she? So he's probably saying, don't ever try and escape again. <laughs> <laughs> is he saying, uh, just smile for the cameras and as a little treat later, we won't have sex? Yeah. <laughs> is she saying, where are my eyes? <laughs> <laughs> he's saying, uh, so how long ago did you form Aerosmith? <laughs> She's probably saying, can we just go around this grassy knoll one more time? <laughs> <laughs> and what it actually is? Melania Trump finally moved to Washington this week. Indeed she did. Thank you very much. I gamble, yes. <laughs> yes, there's a picture of Donald Trump and his wife Melania at the White House this week. Melania has finally joined her husband in the White House after spending the first five months of his presidency in New York. She looks very happy about it. Doesn't, doesn't she? she? Yeah. I think she's packed all her most important stuff. Prize <laughs> possession, uh, her favourite pillow to scream into at night. <laughs> <laughs> You know that now she's moved into the White House, like all first ladies take up a kind of a charitable cause and stuff is what they generally yes. do. And hers is before the election she decided hers was going to be cyber bullying yeah. and social media. And you think, well, all she needs to do is just tell him to stop it. <laughs> 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 Melania tweeted a photo of her at the White House saying she couldn't wait to make some memories in her new home. And those memories will presumably include her husband being impeached and cupboard sex with her bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> what has Elsa been accused of this week? Uh, well, <laughs> lying, I guess. Yeah, well, that's he? a general but thing. The... Specific lies? So he's in this problem, isn't he? So James Comey, who was the head of the FBI, he was sacked for investigating his links with Russia. Yep. Now it's the cover-up he's being accused of, isn't it? It is, actually, yeah, that, that he got rid of him in order to, you know... Yeah. To... How yeah. tall is James Comey? Six yeah. foot eight. Yeah. It is not the look you want in a no. spy, is no. it? <laughs> American politics is so much more badass than British politics. They've got the ex-head of the FBI testifying against the president because oh. the Russians might have rigged the election. We've got a man with his bucket on his head and a fish finger. <laughs> 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 but he had a fantastic interaction. He said that, yeah, that at, some point, at one point they had a discussion, Trump and Comey together, where Trump turned to Comey and said, I want loyalty. <laughs> and Comey said that he just stood there not saying anything, hoping that he could get out of this moment, and eventually had to say something and said, I can promise you honesty. And Trump said, yes, honest loyalty. <laughs> <laughs> Because what? That is like going to a lady going, I want sex. And she said, we can be friends. <laughs> and you go, yes, sex friends. <laughs> it's good to know we're on the same page here. <laughs> It's like he's genuinely upset that Comey's talking about stuff, cos they had a discussion in the Oval Office and now Trump's going, he's a leaker. To be fair, though, most men Trump's age are leakers anyway, aren't they? Whether they want to be or not. <laughs> yeah, he, quite often he pays for it. <laughs> <laughs> isn't, isn't calling him a leaker basically saying it is definitely true? Yes, shouldn't, it is. Shouldn't he be calling him a liar? Yeah, yeah, if someone accused me of murder and I went, well, someone's a chatterbox. <laughs> <laughs> Trump's got to be careful with all these lies, man. You, it gets you in trouble. There's a, let me tell you a story, Dara. 
I'm always happy for about a James' story. A little boy named Pinocchio. <laughs> he was a little wooden puppet who came to life because he was possessed by a demon. <laughs> and, and he would go around and he would lie to everyone because because of the devil, and then these, <laughs> all the villagers, they put him on a bonfire and they, <laughs> they burnt his soul to ash. And Trump should learn, you never trust a puppet. <laughs> I, think I think we've all learnt an oh. important lesson there. <laughs> you yeah. fucking idiot. <laughs> version of the Bible. Yes. <laughs> the entire thing. In the beginning. No. <laughs> Although I would like the DUP to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> what has Trump allegedly put on hold? His trip to London. His trip to London. His trip to London. <laughs> Typical liberal BBC <laughs> audience. What were you worried about, mate? They're clapping you right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit sort of weird, isn't it? Is this the man who said he would take on ISIS? He's not coming because <laughs> he's scared of a few Guardian readers with placards. <laughs> Huge mistake as well. He's named the new British ambassador from the US. It's called Woody Johnson, who is perhaps the most American named man of all yeah. time. You may as well have just got the new ambassador is called Hamburger Gun. <laughs> <laughs> the name Woody Johnson is essentially penis penis. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 double dick rolling into town. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, but, uh, double dick's running late again. <laughs> The most American man I've ever met was a man who was called Randy Yanker. <laughs> Genuinely called Randy Yanker. People don't know this, but Q used to be a porn star. <laughs> it, was, you yeah, it was used to be. Yeah. <laughs> it was huge, Dennis, wasn't that the. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. This, this is a job for a huge Dennis. That's right. yeah. And Dennis is a slight misspelling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what might be the next breakthrough in the field of artificial intelligence? What's happened is yes. robots have been given self-doubt. They have. As proven by Theresa May's election campaign. <laughs> Stand stable, strong and stable, strong and stable, strong and stable. <laughs> <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, the point's going to end. Zoe and Nish. <laughs> now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance <laughs> area, I'll read at this week's topics, then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Things you wouldn't hear in a nature show. <laughs> well, that was a sticky moment. Last time I tickled a sperm whale. <laughs> <laughs> it's been said that male cows don't defecate, but as you can see, that's bullshit. <laughs> the best way to tell the difference between an Indian and an African elephant is that one of them is an elephant. <laughs> I'm not an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> Told you. The baboon is one of the most sophisticated primates. Would you look at the arse on that? <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why geese fly in a V formation is to act as chevrons for airplanes. <laughs> Coming up, a couple of rhinos banging and some monkeys finger-blasting each other <laughs> on extremely blue planets. <laughs> and what a magnificent scene. The monkey is lifting the lion cub towards the sun and I'm being removed from the theatre for talking. <laughs> Dawn rises on the Serengeti. Dawn has no idea how she got there. <laughs> The gibbon is widely considered to be the most frequent masturbator in the entire animal kingdom. 
We'll see about that. <laughs> to Britain's longest dogs. <laughs> the camel can walk across the sand because of its toes, or, as scientists call them, fanny outlines. <laughs> and here we have a tiger happily eating Frosties. Tonight's episode is dedicated to the memory of our cameraman, Charles Frosties. <laughs> And here we see two majestic birds of prey, or nuns, as they're also called. <laughs> here we have a woodchuck, also known as a groundhog, prompting the question, how much ground could a groundhog hog if a groundhog could hog ground? <laughs> As the three lions circle the female, we ask, when will footballers learn that no means no? <laughs> <laughs> the crab scuttles into view. I should have used the special shampoo again. <laughs> <laughs> and today we'll be talking about one of the largest land mammals to ever walk the earth, your mum. <laughs> OK, the next topic is... <laughs> Unlikely chalup lines. Nope, should have gone to Specsavers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name's Ed. What's it short for? Don't know, it's just always been like that. <laughs> <laughs> you had me at hello. <laughs> Which is why most of my friends think I'm a bit of a slag. <laughs> your father must have been a thief. And I'm going to catch him if it's the last thing I do. Your father's going to press... <laughs> <laughs> it's a loyalty card. Every ten shags, I buy you a present. <laughs> Uh, are you a parking ticket? Because I picked you up on the street and now I can't afford to pay you. <laughs> <laughs> Love is blind and so am I. Now let me fill your face so I know you're not a munter. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say my approach to sex is a lot like the government's approach to Brexit. I go in hard and then pull out when I realise I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> So when you sit there seductively licking your lips, that's sexy. But when I do it, I'm weird and should get off your lips. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a million dollars. Less impressive than you would have done ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I like my men like I like women. <laughs> Hey, girl, you must be tired, cos you look real tired. Get some rest, lady. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you're nothing like my ex-girlfriend. She was so demanding. Always asked me to text her when I got in. That's how small my penis is. <laughs> <laughs> so do you come here often? To this STD clinic? <laughs> If I could rearrange the alphabet, I'd put you and I together, which is why I was fired from my job as an English teacher. <laughs> Roses are red, violets are red, you are red, the sky is red, I'm bleeding in the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> You've got an arse that just won't quit, despite calling an election and losing a majority. <laughs> you don't look like you did through the binoculars. <laughs> If I said you had a nice body, would you hold it against me? 
Well, I cry on your shoulder. I'm so lonely. God, I'm so lonely. <laughs> On a first date, I always like to go Dutch. I don't mean I split the bill, but I'll do some really kinky stuff in clogs. <laughs> <laughs> I like my women like I like my coffee. Always getting my name wrong. <laughs> if you were on an Indian menu, you would have three chilies next to you. Because you make me shit myself. <laughs> The point is going to end, so it isn't it? And that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Nish Kumar, Zoe Lyons and Ed Gamble. Congratulations to Rhys James, Hugh Dennis and James A. Caster. Thank you for watching. I'm Daryl Green. Good night. Following the general election that got loads of new material, join BBC Radio 4 tomorrow on The Drive Home. Dead Ringers is at 6.30. The next, it's Newsnight.